by 1740, trade between Bristol and Bath was brisk. Passengers were carried too. One shilling for the journey, which lasted about four hours. We probably stopped over there for lunch. It's a lovely day for a swim. A Syston Brook joins the Avon. The wharf next to it is a coal wharf, Londonary wharf. Coal was sent down from the mines of Mangansfield and Warmley by horse-drawn trams and then loaded into the barges. The river is dominated by the huge Fry's Chocolate Factory. It was built in the early 20s. They moved their factory from the narrow streets of central Bristol and built a garden factory. Even those woods were part of the scheme of things. Here we are at Canesham Lock. Between Bath and Bristol first opened, this lock was the site of mighty fisticuffs between the bargemen and the lock keepers over the amount of fees that they paid. Avon is joined by the River Chew. Quiet now, but in 1968, after days of heavy rain, peaceful now, I'm pleased to say. That carried the now ex Midland Region Line, Bristol to Bath, Green Park Station. In fact, it's a lovely cycle path, all the way from Bitten to Bath. At Bitten, the River Boyd joins the Avon. And at this point, the river is crossed by the Ferris Horse Bridge. This bridge allowed horses towing barges to cross the void. another copper mill. This one went on producing copper until the Second World War. Another brass mill. These are the annealing furnaces. A hundred years ago, these furnaces and the ones further up at Salford would have built smoke and fumes. day for a swim. And why not? Hello, Pete. Thank you very much. There we go. <whistles> Lovely way to travel, isn't it? It's all different nowadays. The Avon is geared towards leisure activities.
unusual way to travel. It certainly gets you noticed. Fishing. You don't go far along the Avon without seeing an angler. I thought it was about time I spoke to one. Steamed up to Kelston Lock. Thank you. Shop. There's a new marina on the Saltford Bank. I spoke to its manager. Well, we've hopefully scheduled our completion for the, uh, the time of the opening of the Kennet and Avon, which is sort of 85, 86. Oh, lovely. So you'll be able to take boats right the way to London? Yeah. Yes, that's, that's, if everything goes according to plan, we will be able to. And can you cater for that size of boat? Yes, we can cater from your day boat right the way up to 60, 70 foot narrow boats. How, how deep actually is the marina? The marina itself is uh, seven foot. Yeah. And we've got lifting facilities and that will lift the larger craft out of the water uh, for winter storage and haulage. Have you had any problems with the digging of the marina? Um, one or two. Um, generally on the construction, we had some problems with the actual uh, material, the clay and what have you, but we've overcome those and it's open yeah. uh, and working well. We'll have moorings and the facilities uh, on the water for over 100 craft, plus hard standing and the facilities for more boats on the hard. line again and it runs by the longest strafe on the River Avon. bridge of exceptional grace, built of Bath stone, welcomes us to the city of Bath. It's Newbridge. As in Bristol, the Riverside attracted industry, both heavy and light. It's Twerton Lock. It's as far as I can row today because there's a very dangerous building just beyond the lock and they're not going to open the gates. Well, this strange looking thing here that sh looks as if it's out of a fairground. Well, it's an automatic sluice. sluice. Yeah. Can you explain it to us then, Bill? Well, it's a straightforward for flood elevation. When the flood water rises, this gate automatically rises with the flood water. Yep. 
And the higher the flood water, the higher the gator come up. And as the flood water got dropped back down, the gator to go down. It's operated by two large float chambers in the sides, all underground, and controlled on a weir, and controlled by two valves, one inlet and one outlet. You control the inlet from the upstream side with one valve, and you control the outlet with a valve over there where you see that water just running out I see, yeah. there. Now that water won't run no faster if this comes up 10 foot, ah. because it's a controlled outlet. It takes a minute and a half for any obstruction that goes over the weir to go down before you see it again, it comes back up. It's yeah. about 15 foot deep. Yeah. And bath before that, bath used to be flooded every year. Every year. Every year. Yeah. Some of the high floods used to go all the way up, back up to Old Stoll Street. And Old Bristol Road used to be flooded out. Yes. All traffic couldn't go through. Every year until every, every year until about 1960. Yeah. Well, 63, I think 65. Georgian city, Roman city, owes its fame not to the waters of the Avon, but to those of the hot springs. Its fame goes back well before the Romans, to about 500 BC. Blooded, a young West Country prince found he was suffering from a form of leprosy. He was exiled from the court and finished up tending the pigs. Soon the pigs started showing signs of the same disease but they wallowed in the warm mud of Bath and miraculously their sores disappeared. Bloodage also bathed in the mud and he too was cured. He became king and Bath became a sacred place of healing. The Romans called it Aqua Sulis. They built the town around the springs. The Victoria Suspension Bridge is odd in that its suspension rods are inclined outwards instead of being vertical. Pride of Bath, making its way down the river. And across Churchill Bridge. we pass under his Nibs Great Western Railway, we come across another magnificent feat of engineering. How did it come about? Well, the city of Bath, since Elizabethan times have been petitioning for a navigable river from Avonmouth to Bath. And again, when the city was enjoying a popular revival under its master of ceremonies, Beau Nash, 
the citizens presented a bill claiming that great difficulty was being experienced in getting materials for the new buildings of Georgian Bath. The bill was defeated. In 1724, a deed assigned the river to the Duke of Beaufort and others, called the Proprietors of Navigation Between Bath and Hannam Mill. This made it possible to canalise the Avon. Work began immediately. The first barge arrived on the 15th of December 1727, carrying deal boards, pig lead and meal. So, a waterway to Bath, why not to London? The obvious course was to continue up the Avon, locking each weir to the furthest point east, and then driving a canal through to the Thames. Ferdinando Stratford surveyed the river and pronounced the route possible. Nothing was done. Dreams of a waterway to the capital became a reality by the formation of the Kennet and Avon Canal. Mr. Robin Bradbury, who is a member of the Council for the Kennet and Avon Canal Trust. Now, Robin, tell me, how's the canal actually coming along? We're doing very, very well at the moment. We've had a splendid year. Well, we've had several good years. When we started this work, which was, uh, oh, I don't know, it seems so long ago, 10, 12 years and more ago, things were pretty slow to start with. There was a lot of difficult work to do, and although we had plenty of volunteers, we hadn't always the money. Yes. Then we started being successful in raising the money, and we rapidly were able to use it to good effect. And we've done some things in the last few years, which, quite honestly, we never dreamt we would have been able to do by now. Is that right? So we're a lot better off than we could reasonably have expected to be. When did you actually start trying to do the canal? Well, this lock down here we're coming to, we started in a very cold January 1970. And we were down there digging it out. Yes. The mud, the armchairs, the motorbikes, the unexploded <laughs> German bombs, <laughs> you, you name it. You we found the whole lot down there. Oh, yeah, some of it of value, mind you. Anyone on the trust who got one of those lemonade bottles with the marble in the spout yeah. was under, you know, a sentence of death if they didn't hand it in because we could flog that for two or three oh, pounds. Of course, they're all now in the antique shops, That's right, they? that's right. At vast expense. Tell me, um, how important was the water of the Avon to the canal? Well, in the old days, they didn't use it much. The Avon was merely the junction of the canal at this point. Yep. But under the new scheme, we are going, in fact, to improve the position far better than it ever was because we have permission from the water authority to borrow up to eight million gallons a day from the Avon, yes. pump it up into the canal and the council of the trust has now agreed to pump that stage by stage to the top level. You see this half of the canal coming to the west has always been short of water. When the canal was, was built in the early 1800s it was very difficult to get enough water. Yes. The other side's okay going to London you've got the River Kennet but this side, the Avon wasn't met until this point here. And that part of the canal, needing all this huge quantity of water to work these big locks, yes. uh, had really very poor supplies in a hot summer. Yes. But what we've got now is permission to take this water out of the Avon, borrow it, as I yes. say, yes. pump it up into the canal. Of course, it all comes back down to the Avon again. Yes. But we get the use of it in the interval.